You've heard me speak at length in years past about how bullish I am on China moving into the future. However, this is something that I may have seriously gotten wrong to the point where I am now questioning whether this is the end of the rise of China. I've been watching what's been going on in China over the last couple of years, and due to the way that certain things have been handled by the country's leadership, and due to the changing in certain trends that contribute to growth, it is looking very possible like the tide might be changing for China. First of all, as should be obvious to anybody, they are facing an extremely rough time now looking forward to opening back up, recovering from their policies that locked people at home for years on end. Now, I don't know why this would be a surprise to anybody, but when you lock people inside for years, that's not something conducive to growth. Now they did experience GDP growth of 3% last year. Of course, if you believe the official numbers. But unfortunately, the fact that their economy grew last year by 3% is where the good news ends. Because that was the second slowest pace of growth since the 1970s. And specifically, their fourth quarter in 2022 was one of the worst on record. Now, if that was the end of the line, it would be a rough hit for them, but not really something that you can't recover from. But that is obviously not the end of their issues, it's just the beginning. They're also experiencing major problems with their real estate, as property investment has fallen there for the first time since 1999. And it wasn't just a little bit, it was 10%. Now we don't have time to go into it in this video, but real estate is a cornerstone of economic growth for China. This is because financial markets are not as sophisticated in China as they are in Western countries, especially like the United States. And so for most people who want to store their money, invest it and grow their wealth over time, really the only option many Chinese citizens have is investing in property. This has led to a massive bubble where people are forced to buy property regardless of, of the fact that there's just way too much of it for the number of people that there are. This has left empty buildings just because people are buying them because they have no other option. This also contributed to a huge pop in the prices of real estate as the people with money bought it all up, driving the prices higher, leaving many people unable to afford to buy real estate, leaving them below the bottom rung of the social economic ladder. And as that bubble starts to unravel, that means that all of this wealth in China is disappearing, leaving policymakers and the president scrambling. They have rolled out a flurry of support targeting home buyers and property developers. But even that is not the end of their problems as it is really just a symptom of the underlying problem, the main problem China will be facing increasingly in the next couple of years and for the next few decades. Real quick word from today's sponsor, iTrust Capital. iTrust Capital allows you to use your retirement account to invest in Bitcoin, gold, and silver. Many people, when they buy gold or silver or Bitcoin for the first time, they just go out and they make the purchase, whether it's from a gold dealer or buying Bitcoin from an exchange. Later on, whether it's a year or two years down the road when the price has gone up a lot, they go to sell it and realize they're hit with a capital gains tax. This leaves people with a sour taste in their mouth when investing in gold and silver and Bitcoin because they're saying, hey, look, I know that inflation is eating away at my fiat currency, my dollars, but if I put my money in sound money, if I buy gold, if I buy silver, if I buy Bitcoin, I'm gonna get hit with a tax on it anyway. And that's why it's so important to take advantage of retirement accounts when you are diversifying your assets. The problem is most brokerages, most retirement accounts do not allow you to invest in gold or silver or Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrencies. That is where iTrust Capital comes in. You can buy and sell Bitcoin, gold, silver inside of your IRA anytime. You can use this retirement account to make new contributions, or you can even use old retirement account money rolled over into an IRA with iTrust Capital. With everything going on right now in the crypto industry, many people are concerned about any exchange, any place that allows you to buy cryptocurrencies about security and fraud. With iTrust Capital, they never take custody of your assets. There is no mingling of assets, and there is no way for iTrust Capital to access clients' money. 
It is securely stored in third-party institutional storage that is cold storage. And it's a regulated trust company so that it is a legal IRA. Like I said, they take security very seriously, which is why I use and recommend iTrust Capital to invest in gold, silver, and Bitcoin for your retirement account. And if you use my link in the description below, there's a special bonus waiting for you as well. This problem is demographics. China is facing a population implosion, and they have just experienced their first drop in population in six years decades. Before we look at the details of this, I would like to make a comment about population because there is a certain group of people out there that is anti-human, evil, and would like to see the population of this earth decline. The world is not overpopulated. If you think the world needs less people, you go first. With the population density of New York City, you can fit the entire world's population inside of the state of Texas. There's more than enough room on planet Earth for billions more people. There are far more resources available on Earth to support billions more people. If humanity didn't have the ability to learn how to do more with less, then we wouldn't have ever been able to increase our population. And if you disagree with anything that I've said so far, it's just because you don't know the science. We absolutely need more people, not less. And the countries with a declining population have the worst odds of survival into the future versus the countries with the best population demographics, growing ones, they have the best odds for success in the future. Taking a look at this chart, you can see China's annual population growth or decline. As you can see, this last year was the first time their population fell since the 60s. There are many reasons for this, but some of them are their one child policy that they had for so long, led many people to favor having boys over girls, and now there are simply not enough, the demographics aren't there for people to get married. Second, the extreme wealth inequality there is causing many people to delay getting married longer and longer and then delay having kids longer and longer until they're financially stable. And so the birth rate is way below what it needs to be just to support their current population. And to top that all off, they are currently not open or free or attractive enough to get enough immigration to offset this. Now, it's also true that in the United States, the birth rate has been below replacement level here since the 70s, which means we are not having enough kids to support to maintain our current population. So how in the world since the 70s has the population in the United States grown? Immigration. The United States has been an attractive, open, and free place that has attracted people, the best minds and best hardest workers from all around the world for decades, and that has been the key driver to allowing our population to continue to grow instead of allowing our demographics to implode on ourselves. So if you have your head on straight, you're a hard worker, you are going to be financially successful, and you're a person of character, you have integrity, I highly encourage you, find somebody else, a partner who also has good character that you really enjoy, commit to being with each other for your entire life, and have as many kids as possible. The world needs it. And as a final encouraging note, this is a problem that is self-correcting. You see, there are some people who believe that it's wrong to create more humans, wrong to have children. Guess what those people are gonna do? They're not gonna have kids, so their ideas will die out. There are other people who believe it's good to have kids, that it's good to create human life. Guess what these people are gonna do? They're gonna multiply and so will their ideas. And this is why I am so bullish on emerging markets ex-China in places like India, places like Nigeria, who have the demographics and the population age to support and lead the world into a thriving future because the world will go on. The only question is, who's gonna go on with it? As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.